Welcome to our special episode of Who Wants to Be a Software Developer? Tonight, our special guest is Owen. Owen, do you want to be a software developer? To be honest, I don't, I don't even know at this point. <laughs> oh, you... <laughs> okay, are you ready for your question? Uh, yeah, sure, sure. Your question is, what are you going to do next? Your choices are A, keep learning shaders. B, give up. C, use Blender. Or D, use learn, learn, a, what's it called? Um, Geez, I actually forgot what it's called. Um, oh, shoot. Or D, learn about Perlin noise. Okay, so I could keep trying with shaders, but I'm not really making much progress. So I could just give up, but I've put way too much effort into this video at this point. So, hmm, it's between doing Blender, 3D graphics are pretty cool to make visually pleasing, or Perlin noise. Hmm, yeah, I don't know what that is. But I have ADHD, so D, Perlin noise. Seeing as I've been learning about computer-generated graphics for the past few weeks, uh, YouTube has caught on and started recommending videos about Perlin noise. I'm going to explain it to you, but I made a little application to make it really easy to understand in a short period of time. Originally, we just have this grid of a bunch of squares. If I click this button, it randomly assigns values to each square, which is represented by how bright or dark it is. So what if we randomly determine the value of every fourth block and then used interpolation to determine the value of the remaining squares? We end up with these randomly generated horizontal lines. And that's because this may look two-dimensional, but it's actually a one-dimensional representation that reads from left to right and then skips down a line does the same thing, skip, skip, until you get to the bottom. If we want to do two-dimensional, we can do that as well. So now we have these smooth values going from left to right and up to down. But you're not limited to representing these values with just brightness and darkness. For example, I could draw a line and then rotate it around itself based on whatever value it is. So with that, we end up with these randomly generated flow fields. It gets really interesting once you start changing these values as time passes, and you end up with something like this. At this point, I was really excited about this concept and started to get creative. What if each element didn't rotate around its individual unique center of mass and instead all elements rotated around a common point. You end up with this. Each element is utilizing its value for multiple properties, not just the rotation. It's also changing its size and color based on its value. This ends up giving it this sense of depth. It's really cool. I don't know what to do with it. I don't know really how it relates to the snake plugin, but we're going to keep going with it and try to figure something out. It's been a few days since that last clip. And I never did figure out a way to connect 
these evolving patterns to the snake plugin. In response to this, I have taken yet another detour and instead of forcing these graphics upon the snake instrument, I have created a brand new plugin. And this isn't a sample based instrument, it's actually an effects plugin. So you can take whatever instrument you wanna use and just send it through this. Here's the catch. I've never made an effects plugin with highs. Over the past few days, I've been researching yet another thing that I don't know anything about and created this effects plugin. Simply put, it is a multi-band rhythmic reverb. It currently doesn't include the Perlin noise animation, but I have created some controls to provide visual feedback to the user so that they know what each control does. Now I've gotten to the point where I've combined the animation with the plugin that I created. And what are you gonna tell them? Shut up. And I've even gotten to the point where the controls alter what's going on you with need the need to tell hey, them. I don't need to tell them. They can't tell the difference. What's the point? So when you change controls, it also Stop alters the animation. No, I'm not procrastinating. It's just that, you know, shaders are really difficult and it made the video really depressing earlier. You really want me to excuses. go Okay. I'll come clean. So the animation is currently being done with something called paint routines, which are a lot easier than shaders. So I guess for the sake of the video, I will recreate the animation with shaders. But I'm just warning you, this is gonna be really difficult. Actually, it wasn't that bad. Only took me about a day to convert it over to shaders. Most difficult part was probably just converting between polar coordinates and Cartesian, but that wasn't even bad at all. Now that we're using shaders, it's a lot more efficient since it's working off the graphics card. I was also able to make the animation 3D, so of course I took advantage of that. Next, I wanna create a simple background that just allows the controls to live together in a shared environment. I have good news and I have bad news. Good news, I made a background, looks pretty cool. Uh, I put everything behind a screen and I was like, Owen, you're being lazy. So then I improved it. Turns out when you separate everything, compartmental, compart, when you, when you compartmentalize controls, it makes it feel a lot better. So that's cool. Now the bad news came when I tried to port it over to Mac. Okay, so here's the Mac version. Can you see the difference? It's very subtle, but if you look really close, you can see, oh, the whole animation's gone. And this is because Apple has their own unique system for shaders with a brand new language. But it doesn't even work on all Macs, just new ones. and. And then also highs the, I, basically, I have to go back to paint routines now. I thought I was near the end of this challenge, but turns out closing scene will be me with gray hair.
scrapped the shaders, and after three or four days, I remade the animation with paint routines, but this time three-dimensional. And I'm happy with how it looks, but now I've grown to not really like the plugin itself, like how it sounds. So you know what that means. <sighs> yeah, we're back here again. Yet another detour. I'm a lot further from the finish line than I thought. And I'm getting more excited and more nervous at the same time. And after a day in Blender and it crashing for seemingly simple tasks, it is officially time to announce 